For part five, let's explore conditional probability and the multiplication rule. So let's start off with conditional probabilities. Often we want to know the probability of an event given that something else has already occurred. Um, so we want to know the probability of event A given event B has occurred. To write this, we write the symbol probability of A given B, where that vertical line indicates that whatever comes after it is what's given to you. It's not what we want to know the probability of, it's what we already know has happened. So for example, suppose we have a container that has three blue marbles and two red marbles. So if we randomly pull a marble from this container, what's the probability it's red? Well, there are two red marbles out of five marbles, so it would be two out of five. Okay, suppose instead we want to know what's the probability of pulling a red marble out of the container. I'm sorry, let me start over. Um, suppose we know that we already have a red marble pulled out of the container. So we pulled a red marble out and ate it, threw it away, gave it to someone to play with, whatever. We don't have it anymore. So what's the probability that the second um, marble that we pull out is also red? One way to indicate that we're doing one thing and then another thing is using these subscripts, but you don't have to use them. We just want to know the probability that our second marble is red, given that our first marble was red, and again, we threw away the first marble. So how many marbles would be left? Well, there'd only be four left. And of the ones that are left, only one of them would be red because we already threw away a red marble. So there's only going to be a one in four chance that we pull out a red marble if we've already thrown away a red marble. Um, a quick note here, um, the probability of A given B could be calculated by finding the probability of A and B and then dividing by the probability of B. It's rare that this is actually a useful formula to use, but it is something to keep in the back of your mind if you want to use it. Okay, let's look at another example. So suppose we have that container of marbles again, but this time we're good and we put the marble back. We don't throw it away. So we pull out a red marble, look at it, play with it for a while, put it back in the container, and then we pull out another marble. So in this example, what's the probability that the second marble is red given the first marble was red? Well, there's still five marbles left in the, in the container because we put it back, and there's still two red marbles left, so it would be two out of five. So this time it's a little bit different. So what happens here? And since we put the marble back, it didn't change our probabilities of pulling out a red marble. In this case, we call the events independent. Our first example, where we threw away the marble, we didn't replace it, would be an example of a dependent event. So independent events um, would be where we have the probability of A given B is just the probability of A. In other words, the probabilities don't change based on something happening. Um, if we want to use a multiplication rule for independent events, we can just multiply. So the probability of A and B would just be the probability of A times the probability of B. Nothing changed. For dependent events, things are um, a little bit more complicated. So for dependent events, those are defined where the probability of A, given that B has occurred, is not equal to the probability of A. This is going to change our multiplication rule. In this case, the probability of A and B would be the probability of A, but we can't multiply it by the probability of B because A has already occurred, and that's going to change the probability of B. So instead, we're going to use the probability of B given A. Um, alternatively, you could always look at this as B and A instead of A and B. So that would give you the probability of B times the probability of A given B. Same thing. So um, as far as when to use which, most thi many things in the real world are independent events, like tossing a coin. Um, a lot of gambling situations, like slot machines, usually are independent events. It, or really any events that really aren't related to each other would be independent. Dependent events um, are going to happen when you don't replace an item. So you take it out and you're not replacing it. Um, a lot of like uh, card games are like that because you're removing cards from the deck as you're playing. Um, or whenever you have events where one's, one thing influences another. This is often a very interesting research topic, like does smoking increase your chance of getting cancer?